Welcome to another edition of Hardware Zone TV. I'm Elvin Soon. I'm here with Canon Explorer of Light and Adventure Photographer, Mr. Tyler St uh, Stableford. Right, that's right. Thanks for being here. That's great to be here. Just, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, um, you know, about your background in photography? Uh, sure, sure, yeah. Um, I actually uh, am an adventure photographer based in Aspen, Colorado area in the States. And I actually got started more as an, as an adventure, as a climber and mountaineer before I started in photography. And it was really these journeys to the high mountains, beautiful places that few people go to, that really excited me and gave me a passion to try to capture some of the images from these places. And then through that, um, I started growing my skills in photography. And these days, really my photography is much more about human stories than these days than it is about you know, the mountains themselves. I hope this that you also transition into film or still. Uh, how did that go about? Yeah. Um, I was a journalist before I was a photographer, so I was a writer and trained in our journalism in college. And so it's been really fun to come to filmmaking after having been a stills photographer for almost a decade uh, and to bring motion into my into my storytelling. So really when the Canon 5D Mark II came out, I realized that with the same camera body I could tell very powerful film stories in addition to stills. And that's when I really started rolling with it, started shooting some you know, more or less self-funded projects and portfolio projects. And those have uh, taken root to become some great commercial projects now with clients. I'm talking about Personal projects. I know that you devote a certain amount of time every year to non-profit volunteer projects. Uh, could you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, those are probably some of the most meaningful projects I do. Uh, I've been really fortunate to work uh, to shoot some volunteer documentary projects uh, in Ethiopia and in Guatemala with humanitarian aid agencies, and those enrich my life more than any other you know, commercial shoot that I could ever imagine doing. It just it filled me with a great sense of humility. Uh, to see how you know other other people in the world live and to help share their stories. So you know, could you give us our viewers a little bit of uh, advice, like for you, what differentiates you know a good photograph yeah. from and a great photograph? Right, right. That's that's the art and that's the the elixir that we're all searching for. Um, I think a, a great image for me. A lot of it depends on is the magic of the location days as well and so that's a large part of the work that you'll see in my portfolio is trying to get to a certain place at a beautiful time of day in a, in a spot that has a lot of drama to it. It doesn't mean it can't be in your backyard but often I find the best work is is in a place that's uh, different from where we normally go as, as human beings to, to see new you know new parts and new corners of the world. So a great photograph shows that you are something about the world that you probably haven't seen before. So. Yeah, I think, yeah, and to evolve on that also, uh, what I'm trying to do in my storytelling is, is to use lenses and light and focus and depth of field in ways that are, you know, somewhat uh, different than the way we see the world as an everyday, everyday human. So often I like to work with shallow focus lenses or uh, very wide angle lenses and to put the camera in unique places, whether it's lying on the ground or uh, up high on a cliff and, and to bring the viewer to right into the story in a way that you wouldn't if you're just you know, walking around on, on two legs at, at a certain level. Cool. So, you know, maybe going that, we can move on to some of your images. You can give a viewer some tips on how to shoot really great action. Well, I'm sure, I'd love to. Thanks. So Tyler, maybe you could tell us a little bit more about this photo over here. Oh sure, so I shot this in Snowmass, Colorado here. And, and relating to what we were talking about before, Alvin, really this is one of you know, perhaps of bringing the viewer, bringing the camera to a place where you don't often get to. So we're on a, sort of a very steep, cliffy ski run here. And, and the point for this shot was not to necessarily put the camera right up against the skiers' skis. You know, we could, we could do this, but this was more to help capture a grand sense of the environment uh, and to also put the skier in the horizon, we're shooting into the sun, and it can be a very challenging way of, of lighting a, a photo. But we have a nice backlight from the bowl of snow that's around me here. And so for this, I more or less dug out a little bit of a snow pit so I could get down, lay in the snow, and that helped elevate the skier above the horizon line so that he comes forward more in the image. Well, so you mean even though you were standing at a lower level from the ski, you went even further down? I went even further down, yeah. Yep, oh. So that I could, I could be right in, the, right in the snow and kind of carved out a little bit there. So a lot of my advantages are quite connected low to the ground, yeah. Cool. So 
Tyler, maybe you give us you know, another tip using this photograph as an example. Sure, yeah, I'd love to. This is, comes back, Alvin, to really what we were talking about before, about trying to get to places where a few people go to, separate, to separate, help separate your images. So this was shot in western uh, the United States in Utah in a very remote area called the Grand Staircase Escalante. And it's called the Golden Cathedral. And for here, just getting there was, was you know, the biggest part of the job. And that was a long drive and then maybe five or seven miles of hiking in with all of our overnight gear, tents, stoves, backpacks, and such. And then we were canyoneering through the slot canyon to get the ropes into place for this. And then we, when we finished the, our, our explorations in the afternoon, the sun was blazing on the sandstone walls and just didn't look that good. We actually ended up camping out there overnight, waiting till the light was actually reflecting off the opposite walls. So there's sunlight right, uh, reflecting on the opposite walls and bouncing some very nice subtle light into this. And so the light often looks best in subtleties rather than in harshness. Tyler, maybe give us uh, one last tip. Yeah, sure. A big thing I, I like to tell people when they're trying to elevate their images from standard snapshots is to try pointing the camera straight into the sun. And it takes some, some you know, it takes a lot of failure, such as what it takes. I'm, everything I've learned is by doing it wrong and making mistakes. But what I've learned over the, over the years is that when you point the camera into the sun, uh, sometimes you need to add a little bit of light or reflection to your subjects. And so here at Snowmass for this shoot, we were working with the 600EX RT speed lights, which are brand new. They work wirelessly. They've been a lot of fun to work with. And we shot at f18, a very narrow aperture, so that we can get a sunburst in the sky here. And that creates some you know, dynamic lighting. And then we add a little strobe to our subjects, so we lit both the skiers here in the foreground and the skier in the air. Well, thank you very much for yeah. joining us, Tyler. Thanks for your interest. Alvin, really nice to talk to you. So that's it for another episode of Power Zone TV. I'm Alvin Soon, signing off.